Hey guys, I'm Aaron Edgar, and this is another video on metric modulation. So much like the last video, we're going to take some easier subdivisions like eighth notes, eighth triplets, and sixteenth notes, and we're going to apply modulations within those ideas using shorter groupings. We're not going to be really expanding too much yet. We want to really get comfortable with these ideas first. The one thing that we're going to do that's different from the previous examples in the previous video is that we're going to break them up a little bit. So we're not going to be playing all the notes within a triplet. We're going to play, for example, every second one. We're going to space it out a little bit more. Makes for some cool and, you know, more interesting variations on these modulations. All right, so this first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a very simple eighth note groove. It's most likely the first groove that any of you guys learned, and we're going to apply this within, well, it's essentially quarter note triplets, but it'll be easier for you to think about it if you think eighth note triplets and play every second one. So that way you're counting all the spaces in between. It's going to be a little bit easier for you to stay on board with this one. Let's hear what that sounds like with a little bit more of an embellished pattern. Okay, so let's embellish this a little further by changing up what our right hand is doing. We're going to use a pattern which is an eighth note followed by two sixteenth notes. I'm sure you've heard this before. Check this out. Let's do it. All right, as usual, let's nasty the beat up a little bit. All right, so this next example is the same example that I was using in the original metric modulation versus implied metric modulation video, where I took a typical eighth note groove, just something really easy that I'm sure you all know how to play, and I took the eighth note spacing that we had on the hi-hat, and I changed that into a 316 or dotted eighth note spacing, and then plunked my groove within that pattern. So let's give it a listen, it's a little slower here. Alright, so now it's time to try out that nasty double bass groove that we had right at the beginning. So what I'm doing here is very similar to what we've been doing throughout the entire video, just embellished quite a bit. So when we had our 16th note and 8th note triplet spacings, I'm full out playing those on the bass drums, which makes it really easy for us to just plunk whatever we want on top of it. So I took a, just a typical kind of pattern where it would seem like we were playing kick, which I'm playing on a gong drum 
on one and three, and snare on two and four with hi-hats on the ands. And then of course we modulate that within the eighth note triplets. Now in the 16th version, I'm using gong drum with my left hand, hi-hat, snare drum. In the eighth triplet version, I'm using the other gong drum, another pair of hi-hats, and the same snare drum, implying that we're slowing down and also making it almost sound like we're using a different kit kind of thing, like just changing the feel of it all together. So let's try just that first. We're not going to embellish it at all. We're just going to use left hand doing this, right hand doing that, back and forth. Let's give it a try. Oh, and you don't have to use two gong drums. I know, it's, it's stupid. I just, I have the gear and I like it. I find it really fun. You can use floor toms, whatever you want. Just make something so you can apply a groove using just your hands over your bass drums. See, there's nothing to it. Now once you get the hang of that, then it's just a matter of filling in all the offbeat notes with your other hand. So I'm not doing anything really fancy with it. I mean, I'm throwing in doubles here and there a little bit just to fill it out. But the basic example, I'm just playing all the offbeat notes with my opposing hand on the snare drum as ghost notes. Alright, so I hope you had fun with these. So as I'm always saying, don't just use the examples that I'm giving you here. Like, use those to learn it, that's awesome. But beyond that, I want you to take your own examples and apply them within these rhythmic concepts to come up with your own ideas and really sound like you as a player, instead of sounding like just somebody who's trying to sound like me. As usual, subscribe, and I'll see you guys inside the next video. Bye.